Mumtaz, Governing Body Member, Digital Health Association, Director Marketing, Sehat.com.pk. The topic of his discussion is Digital Healthcare Commentary, E-Pharmacy and Telemedicine. I see a lot of tired faces over here, so when I address you by saying Asalaamu Alaikum, I'd like you to say Wa Alaikum Asalaam. Asalaamu Alaikum everybody. Asalaamu Alaikum everybody. Thank you very much for having me here, distinguished guests, key stakeholders in the healthcare industry of Pakistan, and especially the president of our association, Dr. Asfar Malik. My name is Bilal Mumtaz, and I currently serve as a co-founder of Sehat.com.pk, and as clinical ecosystems and partnerships lead at a new partnership we are forming with another health tech player called Augment Care. The topic today in front of you is on the topic that is quite pivotal to our healthcare systems in Pakistan. I'm talking about none other than the field of telemedicine, which combines healthcare practices and technology to diagnose and treat patients in remote settings. Next slide. So just a little about us. Sehat and Augment Care are both health tech ventures under the Fazaldeen banner, which is a huge healthcare enterprise operating in Pakistan since 1948 with Sayed providing e-pharmacy services and Augment Care providing telehealth services namely through doctor consultations. With an affiliation of a group that has served for more than seven years in healthcare in Pakistan, our stakeholders undoubtedly have been the biggest factor for our success in recent years. But it hasn't been easy. In fact, healthcare management in Pakistan hasn't been easy. Next slide, please. That's why it's important to address some of the major industry pain points in the country. When it comes to doctors and the respective clinics, it can take a patient upwards of weeks to speak to a leading doctor and up to an hour of wait times in his clinic. If we examine the current levels of healthcare, from primary to secondary to tertiary levels, there lies inefficiencies that can result in patient deaths due to incorrect diagnoses, errors in prescriptions, and inefficiencies in recording methods. Currently, only less than a fourth of healthcare spending is done through the public center. More than 70% of provincial healthcare spends are allocated towards government hospitals. And it should be stressed that due to the fourth wave, there should be discouragement for seeing doctors in public settings in physical areas for such basic consultations. Next slide. In terms of market issues, there is a lot to talk about. Currently, the way we're standing, there is one doctor for every 110,000 Pakistanis, and 70% of emergency cases, according to research, can be alleviated with a simple teleconsultation call, which can save time, resources, and costs. Now, just to put this into perspective, the current GDP of purchasing power parity per Pakistani stands at $1,260, and seeing a GP once per month can be as high as one-fifth this allocation, even without medicine and lab tests included. Next slide. And there on in, we come to talking about ecosystem. As part of the Digital Healthcare Association, talking about the ecosystem has been something that telemedicine players naturally should be involved in. After all, telemedicine players make up the tech and startup ecosystem as well. In the past year, startups have raised more than $120 million, and healthcare startups have raised more than $10 million, the most recent being Marham's $1 million raise a mere year, a day ago. According to the current research and findings out there, there currently exist approximately 15 telemedicine players in the market, though it should be stressed that only a proportion of them are true medicine players. Some of them were, say, for example, e-pharmacies that start offering telemedicine. Some of them were telemedicine partners that start off with simple doctor consultation bookings and went into procuring their own doctors and then going into ancillary services as well. Next slide. So as this basically map should show you, this basically has listed the digital healthcare players in the market from those that are simply providing appointments and listings, to those applying medical records, to those in the pharmacy field, to those in what we might call telehealth, and to those that you could say go into other areas like blockchain and record management and simple data keeping. Next slide. Now, when we talk about COVID-19 and telemedicine, we should realize that the advent of the internet alongside dealing with this pandemic has naturally brought a lot of people online. App and internet usage in general has increased in triple digits since the first wave, and now there is even a telemedicine policy being drafted by the NHSA 
to further consolidate this policy, allowing for proper record keeping to take place, allowing for quality control and data management, allowing even the proper doctor to speak to the proper patient and to give him a proper diagnosis, therefore allowing for proper treatment. You see all these coming into a very positive domino effect. Next slide. And to top it off, this isn't nearly an idea, but it is a call to action. There is a great need of the hour with the introduction of the Sayeth Guard to allow for treatment through private sector healthcare facilities to have the 7.8 million families using the card to have access to telemedicine services. This is indeed the right platform to have a call to action for all such players to be a part of one singular platform for the benefit of everybody in it. Next slide. Thank you very much for having me here. I just wanted to make my introduction brief and to talk about the industry and all our collaborations and would like to 